Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Aside from the larger headlines of Sting debuting in AEW, their partnership with Impact Wrestling and Kenny Omega and Don Callis' partnership, the other big news story regarding AEW recently has been controversy surrounding AEW commentator Jim Ross. JR has openly criticised certain things about AEW on his podcast, including in particular the spot where multiple people gather in a group so they can catch someone diving onto them in an obviously contrived manner. Unsurprisingly, according to a report from earlier this week from Wrestling News Co, AEW talent didn't much care for these comments as the guy who's supposed to help put us over is going out there and publicly burying us. Brandon Cutler then mockingly used Ross's criticism to promote the Inner Circle multi-man tag match from this week's episode of Dynamite, tweeting, we're gonna go outside, cluster up like coil, stand there in a huddle, friends and foes together side by side to catch some leaping idiot going over the top. JR does have his supporters within AEW though, as both Dax Harwood and Darby Allen have publicly agreed with his comments. And now on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer has expanded upon this, saying that the situation has caused controversy backstage in the company. Brian Alvarez then mentioned that some wrestlers were yelled at backstage recently for performing a spot similar to what JR had been criticizing on his podcast. Dot 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 dive. But perhaps JR is onto something, as despite an appearance from Sting, AEW's viewership dropped dramatically this week, managing an average of 806,000 viewers with a 0.32 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic, which is down 189,000 viewers from last week's show. With last week's Dynamite actually managing to outdraw this week's Raw in the 18 to 49 demographic, fans were curious to see if they could do it again this week, but unfortunately, they didn't come close. Meanwhile, NXT managed an average of 766,000 viewers with a 0.19 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic, which is up by 107,000 viewers. This is perhaps NXT's most impressive viewership figure since the Halloween Havoc special, which featured top quality matches of Kyle O'Reilly versus Pete Dunne and Rhea Ripley versus Tony Storm, which technically means that the total viewership for Wednesday nights was 1.572 million viewers, which is higher than Raw's record low viewership from this week. Let's go Wednesdays. One of the other major talking points from this week was Vince McMahon's reported tantrum backstage, where he sent a bunch of big guys such as Keith Lee, Otis, Mace, Omos, Dabba Kato, and others back to the Performance Center to get more training as he felt they were unsafe workers. Following the frank bewilderment that most people displayed at the news that Keith Lee needed more in-ring polishing, Otis spoke to Ryan Satin of Fox Sports about this report from the Wrestling Observer, where he refuted that this was a big tantrum from Vince and that the option to go and train more has always been open. It's always been there. It wasn't like we were told this and that. The Performance Center is a tool for us to get better. If someone wants to come up to me and work on stuff or vice versa, we're always working. That report was kind of funny. We're never not working, especially not when we don't have live events, so we can't really get our stuff out. It's just bottled inside. We're not getting that stuff out there, so we'll find more and more ways to get in the ring. There hasn't been set dates or anything. It's just when you want to come in. It's always been there. I don't know why it became a big report gimmick. Otis then went on to say that he found out about the report from his father and called it a misinterpretation. However, Fightful Select gathered more information on the report and found that Otis is well liked backstage, but we were told a couple of spots in recent months that got the attention of people at Gorilla Position that believed Otis could be safer in the ring. There wasn't said to be heat in association with that. What do you think? Did Vince McMahon have a tantrum and demand people return to the Performance Center, or did he calmly and politely tell everyone the option to train more at the Performance Center was there for them? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere saying he definitely had a tantrum, didn't he? Following Raw's record low viewership from this week's episode, it was reported by WrestleVotes that reactionary decisions were going to be made on the Monday show, which filled fans with dread based on WWE's track record. In recent times alone, when WWE have felt like their back was against the wall, we've experienced such things as the wildcard rule, the dark third hour of Raw, Raw Underground, Corey Graves' electric chair, cross-brand invitationals, no more authority figures, you are the authority now, no more commercials, during matches also known as the two out of three folds over abundance, the superstar shakeup, and a partridge in a pear tree. Not to mention all the backstage changes like the hiring and subsequent firing of Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff as executive directors of Raw and SmackDown respectively. But maybe, 
just maybe, this time will be the time they finally pay attention. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said, everyone I know in WWE was stunned, and everyone I know in WWE got the message too. It's just what you do with the message. And despite reports stating that much of this week's show was written specifically for Vince and wasn't torn up and rewritten right before and during the show for once, according to a report from WrestlingNews.co, the blame for the declining ratings is being put on the creative staff. The report also states that Vince McMahon is once again looking for out-of-the-box ideas for the Raw after the WWE TLC pay-per-view. This is almost exactly two years after Vince, Steph, Triple H, and Shane cut their we're sorry the product's been sh** lately, we promise we'll change speech before precisely nothing changed. So expect yet another refresh, restart, and reboot on Monday following TLC that will probably seem like things are changing for maybe three weeks before they revert back to the old ways. However, backstage things are pretty tense, as the report from WrestlingNews.co goes on to say that more than ever people are walking on eggshells after the record low viewership, and there's been talk about scrapping some of the plans that were in place for the Royal Rumble. It seems like it may be difficult to come up with fresh new ideas that are out of the box and could save the company while also conforming to the very narrow and frequently changing guidelines from Vince and if you don't get it right, you could lose your job. Sounds like a real fun time to be a WWE writer. But you know what the solution is, don't you? No, no, not cutting back Raw to two hours. No, 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 not allowing your talent creative freedom and unscripted promos. No, not allowing each wrestler to have unique wrestling styles and not sticking to the same blueprint of match for every single TV bout leading to formulaic and predictable outcomes leading to an uninvested and apathetic audience. Put the word Firefly in front of stuff. There's your solution. The Fiend Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton will now be fighting in a Firefly Inferno match at TLC on Sunday, whatever that means. Bray Wyatt made his in-ring debut on the main roster in an Inferno match against Kane, so while this is a nice callback for Wyatt, I have no idea what a Firefly Inferno match is. The Orton and Fiend feud has gone from centering around Alexa Bliss being the Fiend's weak point to hide and seek and Orton trying to murder a man with fire. Kane return confirmed? But Alexa Bliss hasn't been seen on TV for a couple of weeks now, and she confirmed that she's not out due to injury or any other concerns, she's just on vacation, responding to a fan in the comments of an Instagram post that she booked the time off months ago. If she did book the time off months ago though, isn't it a bit weird that WWE would transition her into The Fiend's partner with an entirely new character and have her be the focal point of a feud right before she had to leave? Hmm, don't know if I buy that one. And now it's time for everything else in wrestling news. WWE have officially revealed the signing of Ben Carter to NXT UK, who was part of negotiations with AEW and WWE during the summer, even wrestling for AEW. AEW's Miro confirmed that Carter had signed with The Dark Side months ago, but now it has been officially announced. Bianca Belair revealed in an interview with Inside the Ropes that she was originally supposed to debut on the main roster the night after WrestleMania 36, but plans consistently changed with WWE adapting to the pandemic and moving to the performance center, instead having her debut alongside the Street Profits at WrestleMania instead. It was reported yesterday that Melina was supposed to return to NXT to be managed by Robert Stone, but those plans were abandoned. Johnny Fairplay, who originally made the comments, has clarified to Wrestling Inc that it was misunderstood, and that he hadn't heard about the Melina return from Stone himself, but from another podcast somewhere else, and that Stone was anxiously waiting for WWE to put him with someone new. An interesting note about last year's Kofi Mania has come out from former WWE producer Sean Devine who mentioned on the two-man Power Trip of Wrestling podcast that the original plan for the WrestleMania main event was Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan, which is why Owens was inserted into the Fastlane match following Elimination Chamber. Many fans were under the impression that the Kofi Mania spot was originally designed for Mustafa Ali. However, it was the connection that was felt between Kingston and Bryan being the final two at Elimination Chamber that sealed the deal for Kofi to face Bryan at WrestleMania. That's not the only plans that were scrapped for Owens though, as last year he was almost shipped off to NXT UK. It was revealed a few months ago that discussions had happened to have Owens appear more than once for NXT last year, and Owens has now revealed in an interview with The Metro that maybe if that happens, then maybe I could show up on NXT UK and work with all these different people. I'd love to get to do that. And finally today, it was confirmed via PW Insider that Cameron Grimes successfully underwent surgery recently, and the Wrestling Observer confirmed that he will be out of action for four to six weeks. Get well soon, and get back to the moon!
That rhymed. Sting will be appearing in a WWE project despite just signing for AEW. Find out all the details by pressing the video to the right and press the video below that to check out Cinemania 4 over on Cineworld where this time it's Christmas themed. Can Mr. Davis retain his Cinemania championship? Don't forget to subscribe here for daily wrestling news videos and reviews. I've been Corporate Chopper. Jam that jam.